Welcome back to this News 8 Chronicle, tracking heroin from death to dealer. The most recent report from the Pennsylvania Coroner's Association shows that in 2015, more than half of all illegal drug overdoses were from heroin. That drug alone killed 385 people that year. Tonight, we're following just one of them. Randy Crone from York County died of an overdose in September of 2015. He was 22. And after his death, investigators were able to trace the drugs back to the man who delivered them. But where does the investigation go from there? One drug arrest can often lead to more. You're always going after the bigger guy. But getting cell phone records like the ones investigators used after Randy Crone's death isn't always easy. There's privacy rights for everybody and, you know, that does hinder what we can do sometimes. Police know someone is bringing heroin here. I don't know if it's the climate uh, or just law enforcement, uh, but no, it's not grown in the United States. So to get it off our streets, investigators often rely on informants, but at least in Lancaster County, it's not like you see in the movies. We're not an agency that puts people deep undercover for months at a time living in a house somewhere. I mean, our, our undercover work goes about 10 minutes at a time. When prosecutors are able to prove where the drugs came from, as in the case of Angel Alessia, the man convicted of delivering Randy's final dose, police hoped that that would be just the beginning and they would find where Alessia got his drugs as well. But often, it's a dead end. We also have to temper our expectations in the sense that, you know, our jurisdiction goes to the end of York County. Drug dealers don't know boundaries. You know, my boundaries are Lancaster County. So if, if it leads up, you know, we'll let the other jurisdiction know, but then we don't often know what happens after we give them the information. They may act on it, they may not. Police say they have gotten a lot better. Detective Burkhart says years ago, the officers didn't even talk to each other from different agencies. Now, not only do they talk, many of them meet in person to train together. We want you to have a good time. They work in 40 different states and four Canadian provinces. But the 1,003 law enforcement officers at this conference in Philadelphia all have the same target. To find these dangerous drugs before they could hit the streets. It happens every day. I mean, there's millions and millions of dollars that leave our country across the border um, every day. This Oklahoma state trooper says heroin is coming into the United States from Mexico, and the cartels aren't just in border towns anymore. They're moving further north with bulk shipments. We know that they, it comes from there. We, we look at the documents, we look at the tags of the vehicles that after the arrest and, and kind of start walking back where these people come from. Pennsylvania State Police are following them into the Susquehanna Valley. We're really sending a lot more resources now out into the streets and on our highways and on our airports and on our bus terminals. Which means the bad guys have to get more and more creative in terms of creating compartments and, and smuggling contraband. So police are doing the same when it comes to finding the drugs. It, it's it's called an echo test. This stethoscope is not just a doctor's tool anymore. That sound tells a trooper there's more than air in this tire. It's got a false, a false bottom in it. Police are trained to look in more places than ever. This is actually a mechanism that that uh, conceals the narcotics. Inside this propane tank is a package. I've, I've found uh, probably $2.1 million in one stop. And for every penny dealers think they're due, Law enforcement may be doling out just as much on equipment to catch them. This is called the Buster Contraband Detector. It's a handheld density meter. You can wave this over that particular area. To zero in on places that may have concealed drugs, weapons, or cash, U.S. Customs officials even helped develop it. There are also probes to search through cargo and what's called a perfect vision video scope. This is something that we can stick all the way down inside of a gas tank. The lever here controls the tip so the officer can look in different directions. Police never even have to leave the side of the road. This device costs just under $10,000. So we can scan this seat. This one. That would give them x-ray, superman, superhero abilities that you can't see with the human eye. Costs 45000 The Heuresis HBI 120 just came out in January. This is the first and only handheld x-ray device that can see through um, steel. The company gave us this video of one department in the Midwest who used it in a recent bust. You can actually see the kilos right inside there. There's another one. And Pennsylvania State Police are now looking into the technology. It's going to make our job a lot easier, um, big time. Because right now, it's not easy. 
and even with x-ray vision. There's a kilo right there underneath the floor. Police don't see an end uh, to the illegal drugs coming into your community. Stop it, no, but evil prevails when good men do nothing. So we're not gonna stop. As we continue to track heroin from death to dealer, tracing it back from one man's overdose death to where he got the drugs and where that dealer got them, we're learning even police in the Susquehanna Valley have some high-tech tools to help. And we would process this bag for fingerprint evidence. Coming up after the break, Caitlin gives police her own prints to show how their equipment works.